Hi guys and welcome to another arty video. Today I'll be showing you how to draw reflective and transparent objects, in this case metal and glass. I have a couple of exciting announcements to make at the end of the video, so please stay tuned for that. Sorry again that this video is late, I've been incredibly busy the days I had planned to finish this video off and I didn't want to rush through the final stages of the video and do a disservice to the hard work I'd already put in. I hope you lovely people don't mind, um, I'd prefer to put out quality content a day or two late than something not as good on time. But anyway, moving on to this tutorial, which is how to draw shiny things. My first idea when thinking of subject matter that contained both glass and metal elements was uh, perfume bottles, but I had a hard time finding royalty-free photos that exactly suited my needs, so I ended up taking my own. So if you'd like to follow along with this tutorial using the same reference, you're by all means welcome to, and the link to the photo uh, is in the description box down below. I uploaded these photos to Paint My Photo, which is a website where photographers and artists share their reference photos, and you'll need to have an account to view these pictures, but it's entirely free and a brilliant resource that I re recommend being a part of. I uploaded a few different versions of the same subject matters, so some are a little bit more complex than the others, so you can choose something that suits your own needs. And just a quick disclaimer before I start sharing my tips, I don't think there's any one particular way to render glass or metal, and it's really going to, to uh, depend on the shape of the subject matter and the lighting. Personally, I just draw what I see, uh, I don't really have a particular process for specific textures, but I can appreciate that knowing what to be mindful of can be really helpful for other artists and to help break down the process into more manageable chunks. So starting off with this piece, I chose to use toned paper. I chose Cancer Mittance for this project, and I used the reverse side so I didn't have to fight the artificial canvas-like texture that's present on the front. I used a white piece of paper as the backdrop for the photograph, but it didn't photograph as bright white. The pale grey paper that I'm using is a very close match. And this will be really helpful through the process, as I won't have to colour in the areas that match this colour, so it'll save uh, both time and pencils. I also recommend toned paper in general, as it really helps to push your contrast, which is absolutely crucial when rendering reflective objects. White highlights stand out beautifully against toned paper, and you wouldn't be able to see them quite as easily on white paper. So drawing out these perfume bottles, I used my computer monitor to display my photo and traced the image outline. I then transferred the outline onto my paper using Frisk Trace Down Transfer Paper. With this type of subject matter, where you have straight edges and lots of symmetry, I think it's more important to have a well-defined and accurate outline than in most other circumstances. Once my outline is down, I then go over the top with a light and a dark pencil to start freehanding in some of the key shadows and highlights, as well as making the outline a little clearer in areas where it might have not been transferred quite as well. So starting off with the colouring process for the metal parts of these bottles, there's a few metallic areas on these bottles. Um, the larger one has a metallic section on the underside of the lid, and on the neck of the bottle too but the largest area of uh, metallic colour is the stopper of the smaller bottle. To render metal, you should be conscious of the very strong contrast, especially on highly reflective surfaces such as chrome. I very rarely use black on its own for larger areas in drawing in general, but in this instance I highly recommend it when drawing metal. A metallic surface consists of blocks or lines of varying values and colour, and these blocks are highly contrasting, and the darkest blocks are often positioned next to the lightest ones. Furthermore, these blocks are also distinct from one another, so they don't tend to blend into each other. These blocks of colour can also be quite flat looking on their own, so just one single colour with no shading or gradients. It's the shape of these blocks together and in context that help to describe the form of the object. It's also worth considering what colours are present in the environment that the metal is in, as these colours might make an appearance in the metal as well. 
For shiny metal, make sure that your contrasts are high and that your highlights pop. And for matte metal, say if it was brushed steel or unpolished metal, less light is being re um, reflected and more light is scattered, so the contrasts and definition between blocks will be less obvious, and similarly there'll be less uh, or fewer bright white reflections. I tackle glass in a very similar way to metal. The difference is that there's um, internal reflections to consider. Keep an eye out for abstract shapes that you see, and these shapes might overlap or blend together or fade out entirely. Contrasts are often strongest where there's a thickness to the glass, like at the edges or where the glass changes shape. When drawing the glass, I put down a lot more layers on the glass than I did with the metal, and I also used a lighter hand to reduce the grainy pencil texture, and I also blended out with solvents. I used Zestit Pencil Blend as the solvent for this, but you could also use odourless mineral spirits or paint thinners like um, Gamsol or Mona Lisa, or if you're not worried about the archival properties of the piece and it's just for practice, you could use baby oil instead. Remember though that baby oil is not designed to be an art material, um, it isn't quite as effective as uh, products designed for this application either, and will also yellow your paper over time. I only recommend using it if you can't access other materials and if you don't want to sell or display your work. I apply the Zestit with a small filbert brush and work in tiny circles to help remove any texture from the pencil application and give a smooth appearance, which is perfect for glass. This process also helps to unify your layers and merge the colours together. I don't usually like using liquid solvents on this uh, cancer mitance paper, as I think that it limits the layers that I can put down and it also takes quite a long time to dry, but in order to get a very smooth and even coverage, the solvents were sort of necessary. Alternatively, you could use a very sharp pencil, tiny circular motions and lots of light layers to get a similar result. You might have noticed that I struggle a lot with the dark area of concentric orange abstract shapes in the uh, top left of the large bottle. I was getting tired and restless at this point and wasn't paying attention to the dark lines I was putting in and I wasn't very happy with it. So I decided to use some brush and pencil touch up texture on this area to try and gain some more tooth so I could add more layers over the top to try and correct this area. And you might see this in the video when the area gets wet looking and glossy. But I didn't really think this through and the cancer mitance paper doesn't hold up well to aqueous mediums and it started to stretch and buckle. I also didn't allow it to dry before applying the next pencil layers, so I end up making even more of a mess. In a bit of a panic, I tried mixing the touch-up texture liquid with some yellow pencil pigment to try and regain the highlights, which also didn't work as I made the mixture too transparent, and in the end I gave a last ditch attempt with some more touch-up texture, and I let it properly dry overnight, and I managed to salvage the piece the next day when I was a bit more awake. Moral of the story, um, don't draw when you don't have the patience or attention span for it. It's quick to make a mistake that takes a lot longer to correct, and also always try out your mediums on a scrap piece of the type of paper that you're working on before you apply it to your precious artwork. But anyway, mistakes aside, um, when drawing colourless glass, it can be helpful to think that the colours inside the glass are just the colours of the environment behind it and around it. And to create the form of the glass, you're just rearranging these colours and using the right shapes to help describe the form. With my two perfume bottles, the liquid inside is coloured, and when drawing coloured liquid inside glass, consider that in some areas the colour of the liquid will be much darker and saturated than it is in actuality. And this is particularly true in areas where there's lots of internal reflections, such as where the liquid meets the edge of the glass or the air. You'll also need to use um, some of the colour of the liquid in areas of reflection inside the glass that holds the liquid, and these colours might be present as both large areas of colour and also as tiny fine lines elsewhere in the vessel. 
And by this, I mean that the colours of the liquid aren't just limited to the areas that the liquid is directly touching. So for example, you'll see orange colours in the very top and bottom of a large perfume bottle, which is quite far away from where the orange liquid even is. It can be quite difficult to get those fine stripes of colour in the glass to be crisp enough. For me personally, I found the best two ways to tackle this was to firstly use a very sharp pencil to try and put in as sharp and fine line as possible, and if that wasn't quite enough, I would then use a lighter pencil, pale grey or white in most cases in this composition, to correct and hone that dark line. Something else to be aware of is that you want the edge of the glass to have varying values. If you only use one colour or tone to outline the glass, it's going to look very flat, because nothing in reality has a harsh outline, but with glass there's an illusion of an outline in some places due to the way the glass reflects light at the edges. Be conscious of what colours are present in the glass, and there's often more colours than one might expect. In the larger bottle, I used varying shades of yellow, orange, brown and peach for the main bulk of the liquid, but I glazed over light greys, white and blues to pull out highlights and add gradients. In the clear part of the glass, as I mentioned previously, I used some of the same colours as the colours present in the perfume, but uh, towards the bottom especially, I used lots of shades of um, greys, blues, browns and even some black, and these are colours that are present in the environment around the glass, and as part of internal reflections of the glass itself. Glass and metal are excellent materials to draw if you're struggling with confidence when it comes to contrast. The contrasts are very easy to see, especially if you make your image black and white, and it doesn't take much to give it a sense of dimensionality. Don't be afraid of going as dark as you possibly can on those fine lines near the boundaries of the glass, and reserve your white just for the highlights and not for every single reflection that you see. All in all, shiny things aren't especially tricky to draw, and they look more difficult than they really are, you just need to pay attention to your values and abstract shapes, but the results look um, very impressive and eye-catching, and I really recommend giving it a go if you haven't already. I chose not to include the writing on the small bottle, as I wanted the contrast and reflections in the glass to be the main focus of the piece, and drawing writing and making it look consistent in context is quite a tricky thing to achieve. Finally, I add some hints of highlights and shadows that the bottles cast on the surface they're sitting on and in front of. It doesn't take much to give these bottles a sense of setting, but um, do consider the colour of the shadows and reflections they cast too. And the shadows aren't just grey, but they are a sort of desaturated brown. You may have noticed that there was a large dark spot to the left of the small bottle for a while, and that was where I had blended out a very fine layer of pigment with just a little too much solvent, and you only need a very slightly damp brush to blend out colour pencil, and here I forgot to pat my brush on some kitchen towel to remove the excess solvent before applying it to paper. It took some time to dry, but it eventually disappeared. Building on this idea, don't be concerned when using solvents if your colour suddenly seems a lot darker after applying the solvent. Things will lighten up, but also as you become more familiar with using solvents, you'll be able to predict what things will look like before they are totally dry, so you might not need to wait before you make your adjustments. As a finishing touch, I used some brush and pencil touch-up texture and I mixed it with titanium white pigment to apply some fine and bright highlights in select places on the glass and metal to really make things pop. This mixture results in a white that is brighter and more opaque than anything any of my colour pencils can achieve. But that summarises what I have to say about the process of these bottles. Once again, I feel like I could have spent uh, much more time on these, and I really love drawing abstract shapes and contrasts and playing with bright colours. If you use this tutorial or give any of my reference photos a go, please let me know and tag me on social media, or post it in the Claudia's Sketches Discord chat. I'll leave a link to the chat below if you're interested in joining, and you can ask questions, share your artwork, ask for critique and advice, or just chat and make some arty friends, and it would be lovely if you could drop in and say hi. And lastly, I have a couple of announcements to make. First of all, holy crap you guys are incredible, thank you so much for a thousand subscribers. 
I started this channel a year ago on the 30th of September 2016 and I can't believe that we've reached this milestone so soon. Um, when I started it was my fantasy that I, I'd someday reach this number and now it's a reality. So of course I have another giveaway in the works to thank you guys for your support. It'll be both art supplies and original artwork this time, and I haven't quite decided yet how I'm going to run the giveaway, and I need to make and get my hands on the rest of the prizes, so it will be a few weeks before I announce it for real. I loved running the previous giveaway, and I can't wait to do more. And finally, a controversial topic perhaps, um, I've decided to start monetizing my videos, and this means that ads will play at the start of my videos now, and by watching or clicking on the ad I'll earn a small amount of money. And this is so that I can direct more money into making quality videos, buying more products to review and running more giveaways with larger and more exciting prizes for you guys. I understand that I probably won't be getting much money for now and in the near future, but I would love to start saving up for a better microphone and lighting, and perhaps one day a better camera and editing software too. And I hope you guys don't mind about this, um, this is done in the pursuit of better quality content, but please tell me your thoughts in the comments section down below. So here's the finished piece, and I'm so pleased with how it turned out, despite the little hiccup during the process. And that's it for this video, thank you for staying through to the end, I realise it was another quite long video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful, leave it a like if you did, let me know if you have any ideas for future tutorials that you'd like to see. This one was suggested by the fabulous Sylvie, so thank you very much Sylvie for your suggestion. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already to keep up to date with my new arty videos. Thanks for watching, hope you have a lovely week and I'll see you in the next video.